pastors, David and Mike, in Genesis chapter 1, verses 6 and 7, when Elohim separated the water that covered the earth with what we call the sky, does that mean there was an ocean? Not in the sky, the but here, here's, the, well, here's what it was, real quick, Ron. Before the flood, the Bible says God watered the earth with a dew. Now, we know that there was something, not just in that it rained, but there was a cataclysmic change on this earth. It may very well be the, the, uh, the composition of oxygen and nitrogen. Many people believe that it had to have changed at the time of the flood. This is why the dinosaurs and many other creatures could not live after the flood, even though probably baby ones were taken onto the ark. But this is what happened. You look at some of these, these uh, uh, dinosauric skeletons that they find, and they find very long necks, very small nose holes, very small throats, not enough oxygen at the current rate today to stain a creature that big. So they believed that before the flood, there was a different atmosphere, different barometric pressure, different decay rate, all these different things were before the flood. And so we remember when, Mo, when Noah was building the ark, they didn't understand when he said it's going to rain. It had never rained before because God watered the earth with a heavy dew. So you have the condensation uh, overnight where it come down and it could have been a quarter inch of water daily on the earth. Uh, we don't know. But one thing we do know is after the flood, everything changed. And the Bible says during the flood, the wells of the deep broke open. And then the sky, something ruptured in the, in the vapor canopy around the earth. And this is where it came down. Now, this is some other interesting things. There's about seven organs or thereabouts on our body that aren't specifically used probably the way they originally were. We have the appendix, tonsils, etc., and and before the flood, it may very well be that these help contribute in some way to longevity. But after the vapor canopy was was ruptured, the X rays came through, and this is where our cancers come from. This is where we have all these other things, and very possibly. These organs that are in human beings is not 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 uh, discounting what's in the 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 uh, animal world and in the plant world. Uh, these are things that changed uh, afterwards when the X rays could come through, and we do know that this is what causes skin cancer. We know that we have uh, you know PABA and 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 you know forty and and these different now really high numbers. Where, you know, it used to be like, well, if it has a, you know, a, a rating of, of three or five, well, now we find them 40 and 50 more um, because we realize that, that what the ultraviolets are doing to us. Uh, and, and so before the flood, it was different. I believe that this is speaking of a tremendous billions of gallons of vaporized water uh, that was above, this is how the earth got its moisture. And most scientists believe that at one time, this earth was was like a giant greenhouse. It was it was green everywhere. Uh, it was it had it had like a blanket around it, you'll know, on a cloudy day, even in the wintertime, many places, the temperature will rise in the winter, when you have that blanket of, of moisture above you, the uh, the reflected radiated heat from the sun coming down is trapped because of the clouds and it will actually warm uh, the, the, uh, the, you know, where, where you're measuring it from. So you, you have all these different elements, but I believe that that is speaking of this tremendous water vapor that was above, that was ruptured, and that's what came down in the flood and was was probably mostly responsible for the flood. And when you realize the Bible says the water went and stood above the highest mountain for many feet, for days, water seeking its own level, it flooded the whole earth. And uh, so you got to realize we just have no concept of how much water vapor could have been in the upper atmosphere 
uh, as well as the lower atmosphere as well. Your thoughts, David? Yeah, um, I, I, I think I may see where there's a, a point of confusion coming in here. Back to the Genesis chapter 1, verse 6 and 7 text. Verse six is, and God said, let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters and let it divide the waters from the waters. And God made the firmament and divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament. And it was so. Now we need to realize that at that point, there's actually three places of water. There's the waters that are under the firmament of the earth, under the ground of the earth, the water that sits on top of the firmament, lakes and oceans, creeks and whatnot, and then the water vapor that Mike so eloquently talked about, which is the third, and it hadn't yet rained. So there's three sources of water, and the firmament came in between the waters below and above. And another reason we know that there were great springs below the surface of the earth is when it talks about the flood in Genesis 7, in verse 11, it says, in the 600th year of Noah's life, in the second month, the 17th day of the month, same day, were all the fountains of the great deep broken up, and the windows of heaven were open. So there you've got the, 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 the waters of the great deep opening up and, and, you know, adding water to the oceans, lakes, and creeks, and whatnot, and then you have the windows of heaven open and all these uh, massive rains going on and happening, and it's interesting, uh, another, this is just off the beaten path, but, you know, the Bible says, as it, in the last days, it so shall be as in the days of Noah. Noah preached for 120 years and never saw a convert outside his family. I'm glad it's not saying that when it says the last days will be in the days of Noah because people keep getting saved. And even if you find yourself unsaved today listening, you can ask Jesus to forgive you of your sins and boom, your eternal destiny will be changed. Praise God. Amen. I hope that answers it for you, Ron. Okay. Thank you, pastors. <laughs>